Hello and welcome to Wineskins, a program that features the lives of the saints and reflections on the Sunday readings, along with information on a variety of topics and issues from a Catholic perspective. I'm Father Jim Corda. Our program is brought to you through the annual Bishop's Appeal, the Catholic Communication Campaign, and St. Paul's Catholic Books and Gifts, a division of the Society of St. Paul. Our interview segment today will feature Jessica Anthony from the St. Vincent de Paul Society. We will also get a glimpse into the life and times of St. John of the Cross, along with reflections on the readings for this third Sunday of Advent. That and more on Wineskins. To tell us more about the Emmanuel Community Care Center is Sister Jean Orsudo. With me is Sister Jean Orsudo, who is the director of the Emmanuel Community Care Center in Girard. Sister, welcome to Wineskins. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, Sister, you've been a staple at the Emanuel Center for 17 years now and carried on the legacy of Sister Lucille, who started Emanuel Community Care Center. Tell us how you're doing now amidst this pandemic, but what are some of the wonderful things that you continue to do? So you're right in that I was able to carry on the uh, legacy of Sister Lucille. She left us a wonderful foundation Mm -hmm. to build on, and I've been grateful that I had that foundation to do that. Just like the rest of the communities around us, we have been challenged by the pandemic and the COVID-19 crisis, but we've been blessed. We were able to keep our doors open. We limited, you know, people coming into the center, but we've continued to give out food. We've continued to work with people who are homeless or who need assistance with rent or utilities or things like that. We also did Easter baskets for kids at Easter time and school supplies for children who either were going back to school or needed supplies at home for their lessons. And we've been able to continue what we've done. We were not able to have our fundraiser in April of this year because of the pandemic, But, you know, we've been blessed. People have been very kind and generous to us throughout the pandemic. You know, we're able to pretty much carry on business as normal, as normal as you can in the midst of a pandemic, you know, you know, being very safe with our staff and, you know, sanitizing and wiping things down and everything. But we've managed to keep our services going. And, you know, there's such a need right now. And you don't want to not be there for people who need you. And especially during this time where people are more in need. Your organization really is crucial for them. Let's talk about some of the people that you do help, some of the people that are really kind of permanent residents at the Emanuel Community Care Center. Talk about that briefly. So we do have housing for people who were formerly homeless with a disability, and we offer case management services to them. We offer stable housing. There are four apartments. They are opened to people who qualify. We help them try to get back on their feet and eventually move on to independence. We help them try to get their finances situated if they need a job, you know, look, looking for jobs or helping them to write a resume or something like that. If they need additional education, we encourage them to go back to school to get the education that they need. They too have been extremely challenged during the pandemic for a while. You know, there wasn't child care, so people couldn't go out and they're hesitant to get jobs that might expose them to COVID. So it's been a challenge lately, but they are doing, you know, the best they can under the circumstances, just like so many other people in the community are right now. You've been there for a long time. Tell us about the many people that the Community Care Center has really ministered to and some of those success stories. So in addition to the housing that we do upstairs, you know, we have a lot of people in Girard, Liberty, Mineral Ridge, and McDonald who Mm -hmm. come to us for help, either for housing, because we we have grants that help people who are homeless obtain housing. So we have helped a lot of the seniors, you know, who are on fixed incomes in Girard, especially because the high rises are there. And, you know, we help them like on a monthly basis with food. And if they need, you know, other assistance, we help them. We've helped families get stable housing and they've stayed in that housing, you know, for a long time. We've taken people 
people living in their cars on the streets and putting them into places to live. And they've been able to maintain housing, which is a great success. So we're able to do those kinds of things and keep people stably housed or help them find housing. We help them with food. We help them with clothes, household items. We've had to cut back on those because of the pandemic, but mm-hmm. most of the time if people need things, we're able to help them get it. Sister, very briefly in closing, we know we're coming up on the Christmas holidays. If they would like to help, what do they do? Well, this year, because of the pandemic, we're doing gift cards. So either a monetary donation, then we'll purchase the gift cards or gift cards for for Walmart or Target would be helpful so that we could give them to the families to give to the children. We just can't bring toys and things like that in at this point in time. And how do they do that? Do they call you? Do they send them to the community care center? They can either call at 330-545-4301 and we can give them the address or they can send it to the Emanuel Center at 2 North State Street, Girard, Ohio, 44420. Sister Jean Orsudo, thank you so much for being with us. We look forward to your presence again on Wineskins and thank you for the wonderful work that you do there. For Wineskins, I'm Father Jim Corda. St. John of the Cross was a priest and doctor of the church. To tell us more is Marianne Yeager, She is from St. Christine Church in Youngstown. St. John of the Cross died in Andalusia, Spain on December 14, 1591, was canonized in 1726, and declared a doctor of the church in 1926. Together with St. Teresa of Avila, he is an outstanding teacher of the ascetical and mystical life. His father had been disowned by his family for marrying beneath his social class, and it is possible that he was of Jewish descent, as was St. Teresa of Avila. However, John's father died before John was one year old, and as a result, his mother moved to Medina del Campo in order to learn a living. There John studied under the Jesuits and also served as an apprentice for various trades, ending up as a male nurse. John entered the Carmelite order in 1563, and after his novitiate, was sent to Salamanca for further studies. When he returned to Medina del Campo for his first mass, he met St. Teresa of Avila, who convinced him to join her movement for the reform of the Carmelites. John changed his name from John of St. Matthias to John of the Cross, and threw himself wholeheartedly into the work of the reform. He suffered persecution from the Calced Carmelites, even to the point of being kidnapped and held prisoner at Toledo, Spain. After holding numerous important positions among the Discalced Carmelites, and after writing his major treatises and poems on mystical theology, he died at Ubeda, as he had predicted, just as the friars were beginning the midnight office. The prayers of the Mass refer to the basic characteristics of the spiritual doctrine of St. John of the Cross. The Latin version of the Collect is explicit. Father, you led St. John of the Cross to your holy mountain through the dark night of renunciation and the ardent love of the cross. St. John had stated in his treatise the ascent of Mount Carmel, that it is necessary to mortify every attachment to sensate things, because in comparison with God, these things are pure darkness. And he said in the spiritual canticle that the gate that gives entrance to these riches of wisdom is the cross. Because it is a narrow gate, while many seek the joys that can be gained through it, it is given to few to desire to pass through it. Toward the end of his life, while praying before the crucifix, a voice asked him what reward he wanted for his service for the Lord. John replied that he desired to endure suffering for the Lord and to be despised and counted as nothing. From the events that followed, it is evident that his request was granted. In the petition of the opening prayer, We ask that by following his example, 
we may come to the eternal vision of your glory. The teaching of this mystical doctor has special significance for our sensate society, in which it is so easy to become attached to pleasure and to created goods. The path to detachment and self-denial is still the path that leads to union with God. For Wineskins, I'm Marianne Yeager. With me now is Jessica Anthony, who is the director of St. Vincent de Paul in Mahoney County. Welcome back to Wineskins. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You know, last time you were here, Jessica, you gave us kind of a, an idea of what's been going on with the uh, St. Vincent de Paul. And you were new in the job, but now you're very seasoned in the job. So tell us over the last several years what you've learned about the operation and why is it so important for us to put our time, talent, and treasure into St. Vincent de Paul? Absolutely. So over the years in my position, I think I've really worked on getting to know the general community with our guests Mm -hmm. and what is the ever-changing scenarios that we get into as the economy and with poverty. And I just really focus on their changing needs. And it is. I mean, it changes day by day. And so I I really stay focused on connecting with our guests, as well as the general community who also donates and the Catholic Church that donates as well. So I've learned a lot in my position. I have a passion for it. I love it. And glad that that stayed the same. (laughs) So I definitely still love what I do. (laughs) Let's talk a little bit about some of the people that come for assistance at St. Vincent de Paul. We know that during this time of COVID, there's been lots of needs out there. Have those needs grown greater because of this pandemic? Absolutely. So due to the pandemic, we actually see our food pantry, our district food pantry, servicing a lot more of the food boxes that we make. Each food box is made to last two weeks to family. It is also adjusted due to the family size. And so we do see people more in need of those because we also support the stay-at-home measures as much as possible. So due to that, with COVID in mind, we also see that we are adjusting at the pantry. So we're doing larger orders. And we went from an average of around 100 to 150 boxes every two weeks to around 300 boxes every two weeks. So we've definitely doubled. Also with the kids being out of school, they're at home for more meals and everybody is just trying to adjust as well. And I would imagine that you get a lot of help from the community. What is that help? kind of put a name and a face to who helps St. Vincent de Paul? Sure. So mostly I would say that our support comes from the Catholic churches throughout the entire Mahoning County. So in each church, we actually do have a St. Vincent de Paul society within each church, and they really manage what goes on at their churches, but they also support the district as well. We also have longtime donors who remember us from their times of need as children all the way back in the day. And so we have that older generation who is super supportive of us and what we do. And they do know our mission and we preach it pretty well with the Catholic churches as well in the area. Do you ever find people who St. Vincent de Paul has helped over the years who come back and give their time and their their help to help others? Absolutely. I have seen more than I can count our own guests who at one time needed our services and needed to get back on their feet. And they are the ones that actually do come back the most to volunteer their time with us. You know, they might not be to the financial support just yet, but they are definitely willing to give us their hours and their volunteer work to support us in what we do. I remember the last time you were here, the St. Vincent Paul had recently acquired St. Cyril Methodius Directory or the hall there. Yes. So tell us about that and how that has progressed. Sure. So uh, our dining hall is thriving as well. It's located right across the street from our pantry. So that is also good as well. And the hall has just really taken off. Uh, St. Cyril Methodius has been so kind in giving us their entire downstairs basement to form into our dining hall. And I mean, the Catholic churches are ever working with us. We've also moved our thrift store into St. Stanislaus Gymnasium. So we are definitely utilizing the Catholic churches and we admire their support for what we do. Let's talk a little bit about the thrift store and its new location and how it's wonderful that St. Vincent de Paul is really utilizing those buildings 
that otherwise would have just remained empty. Absolutely. So that was the entire thought process as we moved into these locations. It was Catholic churches that were closing their doors to the masses. They would only be in there for the weddings or the funerals and special holidays. That was the thought process of how can we utilize these buildings so they don't just sit empty. And we have succeeded. And like I said, the churches work with us constantly. The diocese works with us very closely. And it's just been a very good home for us. Let's talk about those parishes that actually come on a weekly or monthly or annual basis yes. to help. How do they help and how do you recruit more people? Yes, absolutely. So we are always open to gaining more support through the community. So we'll have Huntington Bank down there and we'll have even non-Catholic parishes come and join us and churches will get groups and they will serve at the dining hall. But we utilize the volunteers more than ever with the COVID and everything that's been going on with COVID. Some of the older volunteers aren't able to join us, but they've been doing other things like making masks when COVID first hit. The ladies were sewing masks for us and making sure that we were protected and they were given to us and our guests as well. So that was a huge help when COVID first hit. We are using the parishes as well still and the volunteers that come with it. We always have them down in the dining hall. We have smaller groups now, and we make sure that everybody is social distances from each other. Things are normalizing, but with the COVID in mind. Uh, We're coming up on Christmas very soon. How will Christmas be different for St. Vincent de Paul this year? It's different because we do not have our dining hall open to our guests. And the holidays were always a sense of community, a safe space for people that didn't have anybody to go home to. And so we are really struggling with that right now. And how do we keep people warm as well over the cold months? Our hall was utilized in the mornings from 7 a.m. until 2 p.m. as a safe space where they could come rest. And even besides the hot meal, they were there for the blankets and the coats and the hats and the gloves and we're still going to be able to distribute those items, but it is a worrisome that we aren't able to have them in the building. What will you provide for those people around the holidays that other people can help you and how can they help you? Absolutely. So people can always donate on our website and financially speaking, it is needed as well because we have to order differently. So financially, they can always do it on our website, but we do need the physical items. We need the hats, the gloves, the blankets. And we are really, really focusing on that because we realize that these people are not able to join us inside. And give us the website so they can contact you. Sure. Our website is www.mahoningsvdp.com. Jessica Anthony, we appreciate your presence here on Wineskins. And we thank you for the wonderful work that you're doing with St. Vincent de Paul, directing it, guiding it, leading it. And thank you for all of the wonderful volunteers who give their time, their talent, and for the folks who give their treasure. Thank you so much for having me. For Wineskins, I'm Father Jim Corda. For more information and to listen to Wineskins, visit the website of the Catholic Diocese of Youngstown at www.doy.org. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Often during the Advent season, we say how commercial things have gotten and how stressful. Have you ever thought about reclaiming Christmas for yourself and your family? I have some put Christ back into Christmas suggestions that may help. Give homemade gifts this Christmas. Homemade gifts mean heart-made gifts. Write a poem or a story. Make a gingerbread house. Bake a loaf of bread. Do a painting. Make a birdhouse. These gifts tell of time and effort, and they are personal acts of love. Give service coupons. By that I mean that you give some service as a gift to someone. Plant flowers around someone's house this coming spring. Watch the baby for a day. Walk the dog. Visit someone who is sick. I heard of a woman who gave her mother a coupon to clean her oven. She hated cleaning ovens, but her mother hated it even more. Give love in someone's name. In your name, I am making a donation to this or that charity. Make homemade Christmas cards. Read a religious book to your child or grandchild. Children love to be read to. Whether you adopt one or all of these suggestions to put Christ back into Christmas suggestions, remember what Christmas is all about. It's about love and showing it through service. 
It's about priorities and relationships. It's about passing on the traditions of love. And to pass on love is the real business of both Advent and Christmas. Many sisters, brothers, and religious order priests served for little pay, and now their communities lack retirement funds. I spent 34 years as a teacher. I just loved interacting with the students. Gifts to the Retirement Fund for Religious help provide for medications, nursing care, and more. An annual collection is held in parishes across the nation. I always remember you in my prayers. Please give to those who have given a lifetime. Visit retiredreligious.org. 33 million Americans have descended into poverty. And as their futures fall, so does our nation's. Our song today is from the CD entitled, Come Let Us Adore Him. It is by the Kellenberg Memorial High School Choir in Long Island, New York. Savior in a town called Bethlehem. Not a house could be found in that meek little town for the Lord to lay down his head. The angels will sing, the angels will sing, the entire world will rejoice, for we all will be saved. By the birth of the day, Alleluia. He has fulfilled his promise to take away our sins, our salvation reserved, though we didn't deserve to even be saved at all. The angels are saved. The angels will sing, the entire world will rejoice, for we all will be saved by the birth of the day. Alleluia. The star reveals his glory to the shepherds down below. Hosanna proclaims, singing praise to our name. Christ our Lord is King. The angels will sing, the angels will sing, the entire world will rejoice. But we all will be saved by the birth of the baby. Alleluia. The angels will sing, the angels will sing. Our scripture reflections for this third Sunday of Advent will be done by Father Nick Mancini. He is Pastor Emeritus of Sacred Heart of Mary Church in Harrisburg. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. A reading from the Gospel of John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony and to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it. I am not the Christ. So they asked him, Who are you then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you, so we can give an answer to those who sent us? 
What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, or Elijah, or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you who you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal straps I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. My dear friends, in today's gospel we are told of a man named John who was sent from God. The Baptist came, the gospel writer tells us for testimony to testify to the light, for he was not himself the light. Are we truly preparing for the light of the world during this Advent season? Jesus Christ, are we proclaiming him, or are we afraid to announce his name? We should never be afraid to acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, to proclaim his birth, to make that light illuminate and fill us with joy at his coming. Yes, John the Baptist proclaimed him. We too must proclaim him. Let us not then turn away from the light, but let us burn the light and keep it bright for the glory of Christ and the joy of Christmas so that we can announce to the whole world Jesus Christ, the Messiah is born. He has come, and we testify to the truth, the light of the world. Jesus, the Lord and Messiah. For Wineskins, I am Father Nicholas Mancini. We are more than we can ever know. Let that truth grow deep within your heart, and then go out into the world and live that very truth. Wineskins is made possible by the annual Bishop's Appeal, the Catholic Communication Campaign, and St. Paul's Catholic Books and Gifts. Wineskins is produced by CTNY, the Catholic Telecommunications Network of Youngstown. I'm Father Jim Corda, thanking you for being with us. Have a blessed Sunday, and may God be with you. have you done for your marriage today? I gave my wife a hug this morning. I thought uh, I love her. I uh, did her hair this morning. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> I cooked my husband's uh, favorite breakfast. I bought her an orchid. <laughs> what have I done for my marriage today? I sent my husband a love email. I read the newspaper to my wife and it cracked her up. She's, but she's still laughing. <laughs> what have you done for your marriage today? Make a change for the better. Need help? Go to foryourmarriage.org. A message from the Catholic Church. They say America is the land of opportunity, but for some, life isn't so easy. Right now in America, one in six children lives below the poverty line. That's nearly 13 million children of all races all across our country. Where do you draw the line and get involved? You can make a difference in more ways than you think. Go to povertyusa.org today, because one in six children in poverty is one too many. A message from the Catholic Campaign for Human Development.